Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Mark Carroll. Our guest today was appointed in November 2009 by President Barack Obama and Administrator Lisa P. Jackson to serve as the Environmental Protection Agency's Regional Administrator for the Pacific Southwest. Region 9 is home to more than 48 million people in California, Arizona, Hawaii, Nevada, the Pacific Islands, and 147 tribal nations. Jared Blumenfeld, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. Why don't we start with talking about the priorities, goals, and objectives for EPA's Air Division for the coming year? First of all, it's great to be in Diamond Bar at the South Coast AQMD. I've never been here before. Air quality goals are obviously incredibly important to this region. This region stretches from the Pacific Islands of Guam and American Samoa to Hawaii, California, Nevada, and Arizona. Unfortunately, um, California has the notoriety of having some of the worst air quality for PM 2.5, which is very fine particulate matter, and ozone in the nation. So the only two areas of extreme non-attainment for ozone are right here, South Coast and the San Joaquin Valley. So nationally, this is, this is a very high priority for this administration and for me particularly. Um, you know, when you look at health-based studies of uh, everything from asthma, hospitalizations, to people dying, uh, the number one cause of death from an environmental perspective is poor air quality. So there's been very huge, huge strides. If you think about the last 40 years, and I know that's something we'll we'll get to, but in the last 40 years, South Coast has probably done more than any other district in the nation to improve air quality, but we still have some ways to go. So it's a big priority for me um, and for this administration to, to help South Coast deal with some of what seem at the moment to be intractable problems. Here in South Coast, the big issues, uh, the big pollutants are ozone and particulate matter. And I know that EPA is in the process of considering revisions to those standards. Uh, what is on the horizon and how might that affect this region? Standards uh, within the context of the Clean Air Act are revised uh, to, make, to meet the latest science. And so we get scientific advice on on what the health-based standards should be. Those standards are uh, isolated from the normal equations of what it will cost, and we really just look at what should the standard be. Um, during the Bush administration on the ozone, uh, there was a standard that came out, and, and there was actually quite a bit of controversy about was that standard protective enough of human health and the environment. So what Lisa Jackson, our administrator, has done is sent it back to the scientific review panel. They're currently considering the national ozone standard and, and these national uh, ambient air quality standards need to be revised every five years. So they go through these cycles and, um, you know, if, if you're a member of the public, you know, it, for me even it gets fairly confusing because we're implementing different standards right. in parallel. Um, and so the newer standards, what, what they're likely to do wherever they come out in the range and is likely that they'll, um, based on the court deadline, be uh, later in July. What they will do is is really replicate some of the issues that South Coast has been dealing with the last 10, 15 years to many other parts of the nation. Um, so South Coast has been fairly unique in, in the stringency of the laws required to bring some of the reductions about. That, that will go fairly national, whatever the standard ends up being within that range. Um, with PM 2.5, um, obviously it is probably the, the, one of the biggest environmental killers in our nation. We know that scientifically and so the administrator is committed um, the review is is meant to come up this year um, so the standard setting i think her goal is is to make sure that we start that um, in 2011. those standards come about as you mentioned from the clean air act and the clean air act uh, has hit a 40th anniversary what's been the impact of this landmark legislation yeah so i think we often take for granted that we have these incredible pieces of environmental legislation that were brought in to law actually by the Nixon administration mostly um, in the early 1970s. And this one, the Clean Air Act, really has stood the test of time. Uh, it's a fairly flexible piece of legislation that keeps ratcheting the standard down uh, based on new science, as we just discussed, um, and new technologies. So just a very simple requirement that you use the best available control technologies on, a, on whether it's a, a stationary or a mobile source of pollution has done a huge amount just in the area of uh, power plant permitting. It's gone in the area of nitrous oxides from about 155 parts per million in 1970 to the standard now being two parts per million in 
2011. So a huge, huge uh, gap. And that's promoted technologies and mm -hmm. innovations. Um, so one great thing about California is, is all the technologies that um, from Silicon Valley to LA right here, people are thinking about how do we meet the future needs of controls and programs that both the local air districts, the state, and federal Clean Air Act requirements um, are pushing. You've talked about cleaner technologies. Uh, there's a variety of ways to promote clean technologies with incentives and with subsidies and with other types of programs. Uh, but we're still not as far as we need to be in moving towards cleaner technologies. What do you think about the progress that has been made? And where do you see us going? Uh, and how do you see us getting there with regard to particularly transportation technologies? So, mostly it's a good news story. I mean, I think the trajectory that we're on has been really remarkable to see how much the air has been cleaned up um, in a place like the South Coast over, over this 40-year period. But as you said, there's still a lot to do. Um, we're not going to reduce the amount of goods coming into the ports of LA Long Beach. We're unlikely to reduce the number of people um, driving, although moving them into any kind of public transportation is good. So technology is going to play a key role and making sure that our economy is strong, but at the same time we're bringing down emissions. And that's what we've seen. We've seen vehicle miles traveled has gone up, but the overall emissions have gone down. We need to keep that trend uh, and, and really, I, I think, set some pretty ambitious zero emissions goals. Um, my prediction is that South Coast will be a global leader in the electrification of the transportation infrastructure that will ultimately be something that accrues to the benefit of South Coast because as an early adopter, I think technologies that come from here will then be adopted by the rest of the planet. So for me, it's a good news job and economy story because to, to really make LA and the South Coast an epicenter for these technologies will bring a lot of innovation and thought and, and people spending money into the area. Uh, another thing that we've worked on on the South Coast, specifically with AQMD, is our Clean Communities Plan, which we're beginning to implement. Uh, EPA has a significant role in helping AQMD achieve its Clean Communities Plan. Can you talk about that role and um, your vision for the program? So Clean Communities is another way of saying that we need to help the communities that need our help first. Um, and so those communities are often low income, they're often minority communities, and if you look nationally across the United States, um, you can basically map out where the pollution sources will be based on demographics. That shouldn't be the case. The color of your skin and the amount of money in your wallet shouldn't determine the cleanliness of the air that you breathe. So I really want to uh, give Barry and, and the whole team here a, a lot of kudos. It's a great first step, we, you know, acknowledging the problem, setting out a plan, um, but some of the problems are very complex. Some of them deal with local land use planning. Right. Many of the places that I've been to in South Coast uh, were either originally industrial and residential grew up around them or were residential and industry grew up around them and how you separate out those two uh, sectors of society has become very difficult as we have denser population in, in LA. Our administrator Lisa Jackson is phenomenally committed to working out how to redress some of those environmental injustices um, and, and anything that we can do with you um, I know I've been on many site visits throughout South Coast, most recently in San Bernardino, talking about the rail yard issues and the, the heightened cancer risk there. Um, and, and really what we need to do is, first of all, listen to the community, communities. They often have a local on the ground sense of what needs to be done and then help fund projects in partnership with industry that helps reduce that burden. That sounds great and I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Well, that's our show. I'm Mark Carroll. Thank you for watching AQMD on the Air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe. Thanks for